بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ومن تبع بإحسان إلى يوم الدين All the praises for Allah the Lord of everything all the worlds I ask Allah the most high and to send his blessings upon Prophet Muhammad and whoever follow Prophet Muhammad in good deeds until the day of resurrection Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Now, in this sitting, I will go through about four or five acts of worship. The first of which is a dua, supplication. The second is fear. The third is reliance. The fourth is humility. And the fifth is sacrifice. Sacrifice, slaughtering for the sake of Allah, the most merciful. Now, let's go through a dua, which means supplication. Now, this category is divided into two phases. The first of which is called a dua ul ibadah, which is a supplication of act of worship. And the second is du'a al-mas'ala. This is when you make a request from Allah Azawajal, or just requesting. Now, let's go to the first category, which is du'a al-ibadah. This is when a Muslim performs any act of actions, whether praying, fasting, or making hajj. Now this is very important in Islam. You have to make the intention before you do this action. And secondly, you have to do it according to the sunnah. Good. Now, if you direct anything other than any of these acts of worship for the sake of other than Allah, this is considered to be shirk al-akbar. And this takes the person out of the fold of Islam. So we have to make our attention clear and our actions clear when we are doing this form of ibadah, of dua. So we have to make the intention for the sake of only Allah, the Most High. Then secondly, we have to make it according to the way of the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad. May peace and blessing be upon Prophet Muhammad. Just Allah, just as Allah Azawajal has says in His book, وَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُو لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا So if the person is hoping to see his Lord, he should do actions the correct way and do not ascribe partners to his Lord. Now this is the first category. The second category is du'a al-mas'ala. This is when a person says something on his tongue as a form of request. So he asks for something. Now this has two other categories. The first is the first is asking for something from a created. For example, you ask a man for a child or you ask your mother for letting the rain flow now this is not permissible it's haram and this is continued shirk al-akbar now we all know that asking for a child the rain having the sunset is only addressed to Allah the most high so we should always make this act of mas'ala dua of mas'ala which we request to Allah and only address to Allah the most high and the most merciful so we have to always be clear on this to keep away from all form of shirk and know that Allah is the one that decrees when the rain flows when we get a child 
and when we die, of course. The second category is asking for something from someone that he is able to do it for you. Now this has conditions. The first condition is the person has to be living, so he's not dead. The second is he has to be present in front of you or he's able to hear you. The second, the third is he has to be able to do this request that you have. The fourth is it's a permissible request that you are asking him for. Now let's take an example. A simple example is asking someone for a ruqiyah. Now, if we hear that a shirk, a shikh, a religious person, is over in a district, it's permissible for us to go to him and tell him our problems of, for example, we have the evil eye that has been affirmed that we have evil eye. So we can go to the shikh and ask him, of course, the cure is from Allah. But the shaykh here is someone who is helping you after the will or the permissibility of Allah, the creed of Allah Azawajal. So we ask him, we tell him the situation and we ask him to use the Qur'an and the Sunnah to read on us. And by the will of Allah, we will be cured by Allah. Allah cures us, not the shaykh. He's just a way that Allah has created to help us to the road of being cured by Allah's will. Now, brothers and sisters, if you look through the history of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he was keen on preserving a tawheed, a tawheed, a tawheed. And also, most importantly, in Allah's book, tawheed and keeping away from shirk is very important. So we should always have this in mind when we do any action, when we ask for anything, we should always have that connection to Allah, the Most High, in everything we do. Now let's move on to another form of worship, and it is fear. Fear is divided into three categories, the first of which is the fear which is haram, the second is mubah, which is permissible. And the third is the compulsory inner fear. Now let's go into depth and see the differences throughout these types of fears. The fear that is haram is when someone depends totally, totally on a creation saying, this person will help me all. He's the one I need. He's the one I should be directing my all, my trust and my fear to him to do anything in my life. This is haram and impermissible for anyone to do. This is when one forgets his Lord. So he forgets that Allah is the one that decrees and, and Allah is the one that cre has created him. And he addresses it to someone who is weak as himself. This is not permissible and this is haram. We should keep away from it, and we should not take and follow the steps of the shaitan. Remember, brothers and sisters, we're here for a short period of time on this earth. And Iblis, may Allah send his curse and punishment upon Iblis and his family. Iblis is here to take away us from the straight path, al mustaqim. So he's going to do everything and anything to divert us from Allah and worshipping Allah جل, the way that the Prophet وسلم, has legislated us to do. Now let's go to the second category of fear, which is Mubah. This is the fear that one has regarding animals, regarding insects, regarding maybe the enemies. But this is to a limit. So one fears this because it will harm you by stinging and that's it. But the ultimate inner fear that one should have should be for his Lord. And, the th and this pushes us into the third category, which is 
the third category of the permissible fear, which is the inner fear. This is the fear that one has for his Lord. Allah Azza wa Jal. One should know that his Lord is watching him. So he prays that inner fear that Allah Ar-Raqib is watching him. So he prays in the best way he can. He fasts only for Allah and fasts how the Prophet has encouraged us to fast. Now let's go on to another category of acts of worship and it's humility. Khushya. Now this khushya is based up is defined as one having fear with knowledge. One having fear, that inner fear of Allah and knowing about Allah through knowledge whether from the Qur'an or the Sunnah of the Prophet So we can say that al khashya is above, humility is above the normal fear that we mentioned previously. Now let's move on to another category and it is reliance, relying, tawakkal, having faith, having trust in one's Lord. Now this has three categories. The first is complete reliance. The second is mubah, permissible reliance. And the third is shirk al-askar. Now, before I go into the different types of tawakkal, I would just like to remind myself mostly my brothers and sisters, of the importance of using all these acts of worship on a daily basis sincerely. We never know when we leave this earth. And yes, we make mistakes, we err, we do bad things. But don't forget, Allah Ghafoor Rahim. Allah is most forgiving and unforgiving. He sees everyone. And the Prophet ﷺ said that. If you didn't sin, Allah will bring a group of people that sinned and forgive them. They, they ask for forgiveness and Allah will forgive them. So the purpose or the, the, the aim of this is not that you sin so that's the end of our life. The purpose is we sin and make errors then we ask Allah forgiveness. Allah yuhibbul muttaqin. Allah, Allah loves the pious one. So we should always give an account to ourselves every minute. Some of the companions would give a reckoning, reckon their self on their bed before they sleep. They will look back throughout the day. What did I do? What did I do wrong? Where did I err? And they will try to give an account because they know that today they're able to do actions and there's no reckoning and tomorrow there will be no actions and reckoning they give an account in front of their Lord so they were always active they were always conscious of this aspect of being what pious being active that Allah is watching and I ask Allah to increase our wisdom and our actions so that we meet him on the day of judgment in the best of character and the best of all ways. Now, let's go on to the, the fourth category, which is tawakkal. Now, complete reliance. This is when one put his heart and his faith to other than Allah, for example. So he put his faith in someone thinking and believing that this person is able to bring for me food, provision, and everything. This is complete reliance. And this should not be. Allah is al razzaq Allah is the, the one that gives the provision. Allah is the giver. The second is the permissible reliance. Where someone requests that, requests from someone to do an action for him. For example, I am 
a businessman and I have a worker in my company. So I ask him to go to this country to do a business transaction. So I'm asking him kindly and I'm, of course he's being paid. So this is permissible. This is authorized. The other is Shurq al askar When one totally relies upon upon a person to do an action in terms of the here it says relying on another person while showing some form of need to him so he knows that Allah is a giver but he shows some form of commitment some form of 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 not fear but some form of submittance to this person to help him to do an action. This is a form of shirk al-asghar. Why? He's belittling himself to another creation as himself. He should submit and fear Allah. Allah is the one that, and he should always lower himself for his Lord. Allah is the one that provides and makes his situation easier. And Allah is the one that facilitates his means of action throughout this life and let's move on to the fifth category which is adab, sacrificing now there are two headings here sacrificing for the sake of Allah and the other is sacrificing for other than Allah with the conditions now let's speak about the first one sacrificing for the sake of Allah this is when someone kills a sheep for the aqiqah or kills a goat or sheep in hajj this is permissible you're sacrificing for Allah this is for Allah so you kill for the sake of Allah and according to the sunnah of the Prophet so when you kill you say Bismillah Allahu Akbar and according to the sunnah this is permissible for you to do you sacrifice for the sake of Allah directly this is for Allah aqiqah and also the hajj for the dhabh in the hajj or the bayah if you direct any any statement other than Allah, for example, you sacrifice for other than Allah, where you mention someone in the grave, this is considered a shirk al-akbar, and this takes someone out of the fold of Islam. The other sacrifices is when you sacrifice something in order to honor someone. Let me explain. So, today, a brother is coming from America to visit your home. You are happy of his arrival, so you go and slaughter something to honor the, his coming. So when you slaughter, you slaughter in the name of Allah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, you slaughter, then you put it as a gift to the, your visitor. Good. So you're sacrificing for the sake of Allah, but in order to honor the person that's coming to you. So that's why we mention sacrificing for other than Allah. I hope it's clear. The second is sacrificing sincerely for a jinn or someone in the grave. So you sacrifice for that dead being in the grave. Thank you for listening. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.